back here with Ron Brown's YouTube channel. We, you know, usually cover a lot of drones and photography gear and so on, but uh, t tonight we're going to talk about some editing programs to, to you know, because, you know, you, you tag all these devices like your drones and your GoPros and your iPhones, and you got to get that, that video, that 4K or 5K video, whatever you took off these devices. You got to get off there and you got to get edited because, you know, nobody just wants to see you throw up, uh, you know, uh, a, a big uh, unedited video so uh yeah so we're gonna kind of you know talk focus in on uh final cut pro for the uh for the ipad the ipad pro specifically this was announced in, in may and it came out and then may beginning of june so i've been using it for over a month now and i want to give you my thoughts on it, on it so far because i know you know when it came out there's a whole bunch of initial reviews and you don't hear anything more from the people you know like uh, and and you know i always appreciate those first looks and whatever I do first looks at products too but um, you know I also appreciate when somebody comes back a little bit later after they've had some hands on with it and, and kind of can give you some more um, considered uh, uh, opinions on these products so anyhow yeah final, I'm going to I'm going to say Final Cut Pro for, for you know iOS or mobile for the last time anytime I say Final Cut the rest of this video I re, I'm referring to the Final Cut Pro for the iPad Pro if I mean the desktop i uh, throw the word desktop in there so yeah you know let me get to the facts you know i think it only runs on uh you know the, uh, the ipad pros m1 m2 uh chips or whatever older ones or just regular ipads and slower chips i don't believe they 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 run um you know final cut so and it, it costs a uh, 4.99 a month uh as a subscriber you can get a yearly rate too the yearly rate is cheaper than you know, then, then, you know, the monthly rate times 12. So you can get a discount if you get the yearly rate. Of course, you can pay, you can pay tax on it too. So, um, some people aren't a big, uh, a big fan of subscriptions and so on. So, but that's your only choice. So we covered this in my initial video about this. So I'll put that down below. We won't try to repeat too much information, uh, cause this is kind of a more advanced video than the first look. So anyhow, again, been using it for a month now. And it's a lot to like here. I love the interface of uh, the app here. It kind of reminds you of the desktop, but it's been fully integrated for a touch interface. And of course, you can use the Apple Pencil along with you know this this finger here for uh, the touch interface. And uh, you know, again, it, it's so uh, kind of intuitive, seamless. Uh, you know, the, uh, the changes they made for the touch interface. And one of the highlights is a lot of people talk about this. They have this scroll wheel. You you can activate by touching it's still on the right side of the screen top and his scroll wheel is great to, to scrub through video very quickly and precisely it's a feature nobody else has uh anything close to this on the um you know on the ipad in, in editing apps here so um and uh, the, you know, and I talked about this in the first one, so I won't go on. It does not uh, edit video from external sources such as LumaFusion. LumaFusion, you can put a, a hard drive up to it and uh, put a hard drive into it and edit. You can do everything off the uh, you know the external drive, and it works really fast if you use like a you know SSD type drive. You you barely even notice that you're not editing off the internal drives, but you cannot do that here. So that kind of handicaps it a little bit here, especially if you don't have a like a, a big one gig or two gig iPad where you have a lot of uh you know, a lot of memory because, you know, not only you have to have the video on there, but that brings it into Final Cut and it duplicates it again. So you're eating up a lot of space if you get, if you're doing some long form 4K uh, type video. I don't think this edits 5K video. I think Apple only is a limit of four. I mean, it'll you know, edit 5K video, but you cannot output it as a 5K, a 5K video yet. So it's one of the limitations with Apple and 4K. And that, that could change or whatever. And I hope I got that right. Um, so, uh, to me, I found the best workflow is uh, editing your iPhone video. And now, I mean, you'd say iPhone, but iPhone shoots, you know, this real high res. You can shoot pro res, 4K, 60. Uh, I don't know if you can do 120 or not in 4K. But anyhow, you can shoot pro res, um, you know, real, real high definition video. Uh, almost as good as a, out of any other device I have and then of course that goes right into your uh, when you shoot an iPhone it goes right into your camera roll which is you know goes to photos so you already have it available anyways in, in, in your photos so you can you can draw them out of whatever meal download them and still take up more space but it's so easy to edit iPhone video because you don't have to like you know 
hooks up that transferred over is kind of already there. Or you've on a file real fast, you can you can send it over by uh, the, you know the the way you just what's the term they they use when you just share the from one device to the other real fast. I'm talking fast here, so I forget all my buzzwords here. But you can Apple transfer it. I made my own word up there, real adequate too. But anyhow, but the point is. I mostly use it just to edit an iPhone video because I don't have to figure out how to get the video from, a, say, a drone or a GoPro or some other device, you know, on the iPad, uh, which, which you know is not all that hard. You can hook and throw a memory card up, but uh, again, you know, um, I, I hate to take. I don't have a real large iPad uh, hard drive capacity, so that that um, you know, that that just slows me down from putting a lot of you know, big video files on it, uh, where, you know, with LumaFusion, I don't care how much video I have to edit it because I'm doing it off the external. So, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, the another uh, con here is, um, I, you know, it, if, as far as I can tell, it doesn't, like, do LUTs. I don't have LUTs in it. So if I shoot some kind of log video where I need a LUT in there, I, I don't have a LUT uh, uh, compatibility with it. Uh, so then at that point, I would have to, like, transfer over to Final Cut for the desktop and apply the LUTs later. And a lot of people like a workflow like that where they just kind of do a rough cut on the iPad and then do the heavy lifting back on the, uh, the desktop, which, you know, is good. But I kind of, like... Um, you know, uh, I kind of like just doing it all on, on, on the iPad or whatever, you know, because sometimes I might be up on a trip or a little mini trip. I decide not to bring the laptop along, so I kind of want to, you know, maybe take some stuff to completion on, on the iPad. So, uh, yeah, a, a little bit of a, you know, a, a con there on the LUTs. And the color grade, too. I mean, it has, it doesn't have, like, the color wheels and, and the traditional things you have in the desktop version of Final Cut. It has... These sliders sort of reminiscent of Lightroom on, on uh, you know, on the mobile, or whatever, or you know, and um, you know, and they don't really seem to be that powerful. You slide them, and they don't really sometimes make that make that the change you want them to make. So um, yeah, I'm not really happy with um, th things like that. The uh, the the ability to edit the video as far as color correction, contrast, uh, saturation, things like that. So, um, and you know, I, I haven't spoke about DaVinci Resolve yet. I mentioned Luma Fusion, but Resolve is also on the iPad uh, now, and uh, you know, it's almost like the full desktop versions here. But uh, they didn't really adjust it too much for a touch interface. It's still kind of like more like a desktop app on the iPad. So I, I don't like the interface all that much, um, you know, except that's familiar with the desktop, you know, because they didn't said take advantage of any of the things the iPad does well. But, you know, their color correction stuff is almost the same thing that's on the desktop. So the color correction works really well in uh, DaVinci Resolve on the iPad uh, Pro, as well as, um, you know, LumaFusion has stronger uh, color correction tools, and they, you can apply LUTs, you know, with, uh, with LumaFusion on the iPad. So, um, yeah, some of the cons are, so, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I'm not making this into a long, in-depth, you know, super video here, but would I recommend switching from um, LumaFusion to um, Final Cut Pro? Um, Probably not, you know, um, you know, unless you're, unless you have real big um, iPad you know, hard drive capacity for large files, and you don't really do a lot with LUTs, so you don't do a lot of color correction. I mean, as far as interface and the way you edit it, and uh, I told you about that scroll wheel, which is incredible. You just the actual, you know, kind of chopping the video up and hacking it around and so on. Uh, all that, all that's incredible you know, on, on Final Cut, but, uh, you know, it lags other places. Uh, so I probably, I'm going to stick with LumaFusion for the most part. Uh, you know, I mean, if I keep uh, Final Cut around, I'm going to kind of just edit my iPhone videos, which I do shoot a lot on the iPhone, so it could be worth it. And as far as DaVinci Resolve, um, again, if your main goal was like kind of color correcting these videos and, and having the full desktop complement, on the iPad, uh, probably don't switch from that either, you know, because you're really going to miss the LUTs and the color grading tools uh, from there, you know, uh, again, unless you really want that improved interface, I guess you could get all of them. I guess you could, like, um, 
chop the video up and cut it down on, on, on Final Cut and then maybe take it over to uh, Resolve or uh, Luma Fusion and, and, and do more color correction and LUTs or whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, that, that's, uh, you know, I mean, that's possible and it's doable for some. But, I mean, uh, if you want to do a quick and dirty edit, that's a lot of moving files around. So, uh, again, uh, this is my kind of short take on, on, on this. Again, it's a, it's a lot to love here. In Final Cut Pro, and the stuff I said wasn't there, like the lots and the color correction tools, that could be coming in a future update, uh, you know, soon to the to the product, and that could fix all this stuff, and it could allow editing from a external hard drive in a future update too. So maybe all this stuff's coming down the road. So if you're watching this, I'm I'm recording this video on a July third. 2023. So if you watch this video six months from now, a year from now, all the stuff I'm saying could be, you know, like old, old hat by then and, and, and meanless or whatever. So you know, just keep that in mind, uh, uh, the date I did record the video. Because they really haven't put out, uh, you know, the first major firmware to this yet. You know, usually, you know, at some point down the line, you kind of get a big firmware update, especially to a brand new app. Uh, they said this is the first time they've ever put Final Cut on the iPad. So this is the very first attempt at, at this, so I'm sure at some point, uh, you know, in the next couple months in the summer, we'll see a substantial update that not only fixes a bunch of bugs, but also maybe, you know, adds some of the features that people, you know, have requested. But for right now, folks, uh, sorry, I'm going to stick with, um, you know, uh, LumaFusion as my main editor on the iPad, again, just for the external editing, lots and so on, and, and Resolve, the Resolve is kind of you know, probably just as good or better than LumaFusion, but I'm kind of, um, you know, I'm kind of baked into using LumaFusion, you know, so I don't want to kind of relearn to use Resolve on the desktop. I, I'm at some point I will uh, try to try try better to uh, you know to use Resolve on the desktop, but uh, for right now, stick with LumaFusion. LumaFusion just does everything I need. I know how to use the program. I've been using it for a couple of years now. You don't pay by the month; you just pay one time. Uh, the, the Resolve is free too, but if you want more advanced features, you have to I think a one-time fee too to unlock uh, you everything, you know, the whole toolbox uh, for for the app here. So there is a, a free one. Month trial a uh, uh, final cut I've already used the the free and got, got charged my, my my first month um, and, and you know if you if you want to play around with it, I recommend taking advantage of that free trial and just you've seen how incredible the touch interface is on, on Final Cut Pro it really is they did a great job you know as usual Apple with it with the interface so again just to wrap up repeat myself here but you know let's hope they kind of flush the app out with some firmware updates in, in the next couple of months and maybe uh, get it full feature maybe I will at that point return to uh, you know Final Cut as my main editor on on the iPad and maybe uh, you know Maybe kick Luma Fusion, maybe kick Luma Fusion to the curb or whatever. You know, again, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm not like loyal to any any particular app or brand. You, know, whoever's doing the best job right there, I'm gonna jump jump ship to them, or whatever. I mean, there's some. Um, yeah, I mentioned you know, once you're familiar with the app, it is a reason to, to stick with it. But uh, um, it was so easy to start using uh, Final Cut Pro that uh, you know I jump in a heartbeat. It's just again that easy easy user interface so um yeah any questions about anything i said just leave them down below um you know i'm not a video expert by any means but i'll, I'll try to um you know answer i mean usually i you know i have a limited uh toolkit of what I, what i need to be done in my videos i mean i don't do a, a lot of um technical uh, things that other people may try in videos. I mean, just a simpler video, just get the video, you know, cut down, make it look good, get it out or whatever. So I'm, I'm a you quick and dirty uh, uh, video editor, but I will say, well, try to answer any, any questions down below. So, okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video, folks.